That day, we were patrolling the border of the human colony on Kepler 186F, a small rocky world 500 light years from Earth. It was a routine mission until our sensors detected a warp drive signature nearby. My years of experience made me apprehensive. We rarely saw non human craft by these coordinates. Captain, I'm receiving a coded transmission from the fleet flagship. Lieutenant Yin's voice echoed on the bridge. It's a direct message from Earth. With a nod, I projected the contents of the message onto a holographic screen before me. Unconsciously, I gulped as I read the cryptic words. There are more things in heaven and on Earth than our vain philosophy supposes. It was a quote from Shakespeare, one of the greatest playwrights of ancient Earth. We humans always used cryptic references like this in our communications with other civilizations. It was our way of preserving our cultural heritage and reminding other races that we were an ancient but resilient people. Looks like we have guests, I remarked, directing my gaze to the massive alien spaceship emerging from the folds of space-time. They were the Thriven, a reptilian species known for its expansionism and arrogance. Lieutenant, establish an open broadcast channel. Let's welcome our friends. After a few moments of tension, the scaly face of a Thriven officer appeared on the main screen. His yellow eyes stared at me disdainfully. Human creature, his voice hissed through the audio speakers. Your ships shouldn't be in this sector. You have violated our space and will be punished for such an affront. I suppressed a sarcastic smile. The Thriven have always considered themselves the masters of the galaxy, despite the fact that the Federation of Interplanetary Races clearly regulates the borders and territories of each civilization. This is a human colony, duly recognized by the Federation, I replied calmly. I suggest you review your star maps, friend Thriven. We don't want misunderstandings that could lead to an unfortunate incident. A tense silence ensued, punctuated only by the hum of the ship's machines. Officer Thriven stared at me for long seconds before continuing. I have been ordered to transport this exploration craft back to our lines. We will not interfere with your Terran affairs as long as you worms remain in your own home. The connection was abruptly terminated, and the Thriven ship opened a warp vortex ready to depart. I knew this incident wouldn't turn out like this, the Thriven were known for stretching the boundaries to the limit. Something told me that this exchange of sour words was just the beginning of a much larger conflict. Lieutenant Yin, report this meeting to the Coalition High Command in Ebony, I ordered, feeling the weight of my responsibilities fall on my shoulders. It looks like we're going to have visits very soon. Get ready to host some dignitaries of the Federation of Interplanetary Races in our humble ship. The next few days were a real ordeal for me and my crew. After the incident with a Thriven ship, we were ordered to escort a diplomatic entourage from the Federation of Interplanetary Races to Earth. It was the first official contact between humanity and other civilizations in centuries, and the entire galaxy seemed to hold its breath at this historic encounter. I was designated as the human representative in the initial negotiations. I felt the weight of this responsibility like an anchor attached to my shoulders. After all, how could he explain the Terran Coalition's enigmatic and sometimes hostile approach to beings from such different worlds? How do we make these breeds understand our cryptic messages and our reserved behavior? The journey to Earth was tense but productive. I spent long hours talking to the alien diplomats, trying to unravel their cultures and ways of thinking. In return, they bombarded me with questions about human nature and our colonies scattered throughout the galaxy. Why do you spread like a plague throughout the region? A Krinoth envoy once questioned me. They would be much safer if they stayed in their home world. I sighed, staring at the stars that slid swiftly through the viewing windows. How do we explain our impulse to explore and expand? How do we make them understand our epic journey for survival? When you get to Earth, you'll understand, was all I replied with a faint enigmatic smile. When we finally reached Earth orbit, the alien diplomats were awestruck by the views of the blue planet that rose majestically before us. Earth was truly a spectacular world, a true cosmic paradise. However, it was upon disembarking that the true story behind humanity came to light. 
the High Council of the Terran Coalition welcomed us into a soundproof conference room, away from prying ears. It was there that they revealed the darkest secret of our species centuries ago. When humanity was still taking its first steps in space exploration, we were victims of an unprecedented attack. An ancient alien civilization, now extinct, considered us a threat to their notion of perfection. They saw our diversity and ability to adapt as something dangerous that needed to be eradicated. And so, in an act of genocide on a galactic scale, they bombarded the Earth with weapons of mass destruction. Billions died in a matter of days. Our civilization has totally collapsed, regressing to a cosmic dark age. The survivors had to rebuild everything from scratch, while still suffering the effects of the alien weapons that had poisoned our air, soil, and waters for generations. Upon hearing this report, the alien diplomats were speechless, horrified. Finally, they understood why we were suspicious, our cryptic messages, our determination to protect ourselves at all costs. The Earth had been torn apart once, and we would never allow something like this to happen again. This is the story behind our journey through space, the Coalition Prime Minister solemnly concluded. We hope you now understand our actions and our legacy of resilience. A sepulchral silence hung over the room until the Chief Envoy Krinov cleared his throat. Captain Ornod, I think we have a lot to discuss about this. A sorry chapter in its history. Yes, I thought as I exchanged a grim glance with my fellow humans. After the grim revelation about the genocide suffered by humanity in the past, the tension between us and the Federation entourage was almost palpable. The alien diplomats could barely disguise their shock and horror at such an act of barbarity. I myself still felt the bitter bile rise up my throat every time I thought of the slaughter of billions of innocent lives on Earth. But we didn't have much time to digest these turbulent emotions. Within days, a new incident threatened to stir up tensions in the galaxy even more. It all started with a call for help I received from one of our most distant colonies, orbiting Wolf 1061's star system. Captain, we are receiving an urgent transmission from Wolf 1061, Lieutenant Yin's voice echoed on the bridge. They report a confrontation with a Thriven spacecraft that entered the colony's airspace without authorization. Damn it, I thought as I clenched my fists. The Thriven again, trying to push the limits. From the first tense contact with that Kepler 186F border patrol, this reptilian race seemed determined to provoke us. On the main screen, Lieutenant, I ordered, seeing the distorted image of a human colonial officer loom before us. Captain Ornut. The man sounded exhausted, his voice broken by static. A large Thriven spacecraft passed through our sensors and ignored all requests for identification. They're getting dangerously close to the colony. Behind him, I could see the space station's panels flashing with red warning lights. In the corner of the screen, the gray outlines of a colossal battlecruiser Thriven were already visible. I felt a shiver run down my spine the situation was bordering on the uncontrollable. Keep calm, Commander. I'm sending reinforcements immediately, I replied, trying to sound confident. If the Thriven show any hostility, you are allowed to defend yourselves. But for now, avoid direct confrontation at all costs. The transmission ended abruptly, leaving us to stare at the static image of the massive alien spacecraft. I turned to my crew with a look of determination. Prepare the particle guns and increase the power of the deflector shields, I ordered firmly. I also want all the combat ships ready to launch. If this isn't just another tease from the Thriven, let's show them what humans are capable of. Captain, Lieutenant Yin's voice caught my attention. The diplomats of the Federation request to speak to you. It seems that our little incident with the Thrivens didn't go unnoticed. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of command on my shoulders. It was time for another round of negotiations, and I would need to use all my diplomatic skill to avoid a bigger confrontation. But no matter what, I would protect our colonies and our people, even if it meant facing the wrath of the Thriven face to face. Arrange for a conference room, Lieutenant, I replied as I made my way to the access bridge. It's time for us to show the universe why humans are a force to be reckoned with. 
The next few days were a real trial by fire for me and my crew. After the incident involving the Thriven taunt against our colony on Wolf 1061, tension between the United Terran Coalition and the Thriven Republic reached critical levels. It was clear that those arrogant reptiles would not rest until they pushed us into a direct confrontation. As if that wasn't enough, negotiations with the Federation of Interplanetary Races were also becoming increasingly heated. The alien diplomats were divided over the standoff between humans and Thriven some saw our growing colonial presence as a threat, while others were sympathetic to our struggle for survival after the genocide suffered in the past. It is unacceptable that you have authorized the construction of military installations so close to our living space. A Kinthari envoy stared at me with his compound eyes filled with rage. These colonies pose a danger to every race in the galaxy. I took a deep breath, holding back my irritation. It was obvious that this insectoid race had some sort of secret alliance with the Thriven. How could I make them understand our need to expand and ensure our survival? Ambassador, these colonies are completely peaceful and operate within the guidelines set by the Federation, I countered calmly. They exist only to provide resources and housing for our growing population. They do not pose any offensive military threat. The Kinthari snorted, its antennae flailing disdainfully. That's exactly what you humans always say. But we all know the destructive power your race possesses. Just remember the massacre on your home world. Before I could answer, the diplomat cavern to my left abruptly stood up. His purplish skin glistened with anger. How dare you bring up this dark chapter of human history in this way, he screamed. Earthlings are victims, not aggressors. We should stand in solidarity with them, not condemn them for seeking a way to protect themselves. And so began a heated discussion between the various alien representatives present. Insults were exchanged, accusations flew back and forth. It was as if a spark had been shot into a barrel of alien fuel, ready to explode in conflict at any moment. As I watched that scene of diplomatic chaos, I felt a hand land on my shoulder. It was Ambassador Krinath, one of the few who seemed to really try to understand us. Unfortunately, I'm afraid this stalemate is inevitable, Captain Ornut, he said in his typical gravelly tone. While some of our races view their struggle for survival with sympathy, others can only see a new power to be feared and contained. I looked at the tumult in front of me with anguish. How could we resolve this crisis if even the supposed highest authority in the galaxy was so divided? One thing was certain, if we didn't find a quick solution, the road to war would be open, and I wasn't sure that humanity would survive yet another large-scale confrontation. We can't lose hope, Ambassador, I replied at last, trying to sound confident. If there's one thing the history of my race has proven, it's that humans are resilient. We will find a way to keep the peace, no matter the obstacles. For the sake of the Terran Coalition and all human colonies, I had to believe this. Because if we failed, the future of the entire galaxy could be consumed by the fire of a conflict of epic proportions. The next few days were tense. Despite all our diplomatic efforts, conflict with the Thrivens became inevitable. Those arrogant reptiles were determined to push us into war, and I had no choice but to defend our colonies and our people with all my might. The spark that lit the battle fuse was yet another thriven provocation against our colony in Wolf 1061. This time their battlecruisers opened fire on our orbital facilities without any warning or justification. Civilians were killed, vital resources were destroyed. It was an act of war. We've got to fight back, Captain, Colonial Commander Sullivan's voice echoed across the bridge. His sweaty, exhausted face glowed on the communications screen. The Thrivens want to push us into a fight, and if we don't pay back, they're going to keep slaughtering us all over the perimeter. I clenched my fists, feeling anger boiling through my veins. The Thrivens had crossed the line, and this time there would be no more room for negotiations. I looked at my crew in silence, seeing the determination on their faces. Prepare all the particle cannons, I ordered firmly. I also want our fighter wings ready to launch. Let's teach them why humans should never be underestimated. 
A mixture of battle roars and confirmations resounded across the bridge. The warning lights flashed reddish, the weapon systems being armed. Outside, through the main viewfinder, I could see the huge Thriven ships taking up attack position. Federation ambassadors, I ask you to retreat to the bomb shelters, I said to the alien diplomats who were still on board. What's next isn't going to be pretty. The representatives nodded silently, the gravity of the situation finally sinking in. Some even seemed relieved that they didn't have to witness the impending carnage. I didn't blame them humans were about to show why our race was so feared in the galaxy. As soon as the last allied ships left the battle perimeter, I opened a channel of communication with the enemy fleet. The scaly, arrogant face of an Admiral Thriven appeared on the screen. Captain Ornut, he spat contemptuously. Your choice to resist was a fatal mistake. Prepare to be wiped out of the galaxy, maggots. I frowned, staring at him with eyes as hard as steel. Humanity has survived genocide before, Thriven, I replied with deadly calmness. And it won't be some arrogant lizards that will stop us this time. You're warned. I cut off communication abruptly and turned to my crew once more. All life is precious, I said in a solemn tone. But there are some things that are worth fighting for, no matter the cost. The survival of humanity is one of them. For our slaughtered forefathers, for our endangered colonies, for a future where our race can thrive in peace. A unison roar of onward echoed across the bridge as the first salvos of particle cannons cut through the vacuum. The battle had begun, and this time there would be no tap. It was simply to win or be swept into cosmic limbo. Grabbing the controls tightly, I let a fierce smile cross my lips. The time had come to show the entire galaxy what happens when you awaken the fury of a human being. The din of battle echoed around me like an incessant roar. Our particle cannons spewed lethal discharges at the Thriven battlecruisers, while their plasma beams exploded against our deflector shields. It was a veritable inferno of fire and metal in the vacuum of space. Damage report, I screamed over the deafening chaos of the bridge. Shields at 40% capacity, Captain. Lieutenant Yin's voice was barely audible. We had a breach in the hull of the star wing, but the containment fields have already been activated. The batteries of guns 3 and 7 are out of operation. I shook my head, watching the tactical data that ran on the huge situation screen. We were putting up a great fight, but the Thrivens weren't making it easy. Those vile lizards shot to kill, regardless of civilian targets or peaceful installations. The massacre at Wolf 1061 had already claimed thousands of colonial lives. Suddenly, something flashed on my sensors, catching my attention. A new star contact was approaching, and it wasn't a Thriven subscription. My heart chilled as the gigantic silhouette of a Kinthari battleship tore through the void of hyperspace. Shit. I cursed under my breath clenching my fists. The Federation's traitorous insects had chosen their side. Captain, I'm getting a transmission from the Kinthari, a communications officer exclaimed. They are demanding that we surrender immediately or, or we will suffer apoplectic consequences. I spat on the ground in contempt. Of course, those idiots would find a pretentious way to surrender to the Thriven not to mention the hypocrisy of attacking us after feigning neutrality for all this time. Open a general channel for the whole fleet, I replied with a clenched jaw. I want all humans to hear this. The multifaceted eyes of a Kinthari queen soon appeared on screen, her jaws twitching arrogantly. Terran creatures, his voice hissed at every frequency. You pose a threat to the stability of the established galactic order. Their refusal to respect the limits imposed has left all races in the Federation with no choice. Stop the bullshit, I countered harshly, interrupting his speech. We know full well that you've been plotting with the Thriven behind our backs. Their galactic order is nothing more than a disguise to subjugate and destroy anyone who dares to challenge them. A tense silence hung over the open line, as all the human captains and admirals absorbed my harsh words. Queen Kinthari opened and clenched her jaws a few times, such was her anger. Your insolence only proves our right decision to exterminate this plague you represent, she spat in hatred. 
prepare to perish along with the rest of your inferior race. The transmission was abruptly cut off, and soon the first Kinthari torpedoes began to slam into our shields. Entire gunwales turned to engage them, creating a veritable field of destruction all around us. For a moment, I felt a horrible butterflies in the pit of my stomach. We were just one fleet against the combined force of the Thriven and the traitorous Kinthari. How could we win this war with such unequal odds? Then I remembered the coalition prime minister's words about our legacy. Humanity had already survived near extermination once. We would find a way, even if we had to pluck it out through fire and vacuum. Be prepared for a disruptive offensive, I shouted to my crew. Let's show these subtle worms why our race is so feared in the galaxy. The vacuum of space was a veritable furnace of destruction. Plasma beams and torpedo charges crisscrossed back and forth as the massive battleships jostled in a deadly game of cosmic chess. Every second, more casualties were piled up both from our side and from the traitors Kinthari and Thriven. Through the main display of the Baltimore's bridge, I could observe the collision between two enemy cruisers. The impact sent a shower of debris and metallic debris in our direction. Instinctively, I ordered an evasive maneuver as the deflector shields worked frantically to protect us. Critical damage to the port wing, Lieutenant Yin's voice echoed in an urgent tone. We lost the 11 to 16 particle guns, shield levels dropping rapidly. Gritting my teeth, I watched the emergency readings flash furiously at every station on the bridge. The Baltimore had taken a beating, and not even our containment fields would be able to withstand another hit of that caliber. Suddenly, a red alert started pulsing on my situation screen. I frowned, sifting through the long-range data, and what I saw made my blood run cold. It can't be. I murmured softly, incredulous. Yet another alien fleet had just emerged from hyperspace, positioning itself alongside the Kinthari and Thriven forces. They were the Kalaxi, a race of giant crustaceans known for their militaristic fervor. Captain, the newcomers are demanding our unconditional surrender. A young communications officer trembled as he spoke. They, they say they will not tolerate any more disorder from an inferior species like ours. I clenched my fists tightly, feeling the anger burning through my veins like volcanic lava. So that was it an open coup against the Federation of Interplanetary Races, all orchestrated by the ambitions of the Kinthori, Thriven, and Kalaxi to subjugate the entire galaxy under their tyranny. I looked around the destroyed Baltimore Bridge. My officers and crew stared at me with determined but fearful eyes. They knew as well as I did that the chances of victory were slim to none against such overwhelming force. Still, there was a spark of defiance burning in those human faces. At that moment, I was reminded of the Prime Minister's somber words about our ancient decimation by an alien race obsessed with the idea of perfection. Those fools had failed to realize that humanity's true strength lay in our diversity and ability to evolve and thrive even in the most adverse situations. Yes, we might even lose that battle, but the legacy of the human race would continue to shine like a beacon in the galaxy, inspiring other civilizations and proving that oppression can never truly extinguish the fire of freedom. Taking a deep breath, I activated the open broadcast channel for the entire human fleet, sons and daughters of the Terran Coalition, I declared loud and firm. We have been challenged again by the ignorance and ambition of beings who are incapable of seeing our greatness. So be it. We're going to show this whole galaxy why humanity is an indomitable force. A roar of support echoed through the communication channels. I smiled slightly, feeling a new determination burn in my chest. If we are destined to perish today, then may our bravery echo through the ages. We will fight with the strength of a million human hearts beating as one. More roars and battle cries answered my call. Grabbing the maneuver controls tightly, I directed the Baltimore directly into the center of the matchup. Bolts of energy shot out all around us, but we kept going undaunted. The space around me was a veritable hell of fire and debris. The Baltimore's guns spat out particle discharges at full throttle, our deflector shields working furiously to protect us from enemy counterattacks. 
Despite our bravery, the odds looked terribly unfavorable against the combined strength of the Thriven, Kinthari, and Kalaxi. Critical damage to the port reactor, Lieutenant Yin's voice rang out between the battle sirens. We're losing energy on shields, Captain. I don't know how much longer we'll hold out. I noted with regret the various emergency readings that covered the control panels. She was right even our flagship wouldn't withstand so many direct hits for much longer. However, I couldn't just order a withdrawal. If we were to retreat now, dozens of human colonies would be exposed to the onslaught of those alien tyrants. Suddenly, several new contacts appeared on my sensors. I narrowed my eyes in confusion, trying to make out the stellar signatures of those newly arrived ships. To my astonishment and relief, I identified the energy matrices of the Cavern, Krinroth, and Baradavi races, some of the few civilizations that still trusted us in the Federation. Captain, Ambassador Cavern's exultant voice soon echoed through a free-to-air broadcast channel. Resist, human friends. Calvary will come to save the freedom of the galaxy. I could hardly contain a smile of hope as dozens of alien cruisers and frigates emerged from hyperspace, their weapons batteries already heated. The newcomers immediately opened fire on the Kinthari and Kalaxi forces, who found themselves forced to break through their battle line to defend themselves. It's a trap, Admiral Thriven's hissing voice creaked through the communicator. You traitors will pay dearly for allying with these vermin. Taking advantage of the confusion caused by the intervention of the unexpected reinforcements, I ordered our fleet to regroup and assume a defensive posture. We needed to gain some precious minutes to reassess the situation. Captain Ornut, I get your message. Once again it was Ambassador Cavern, his purple face glowing with excitement. No matter what they've tried to do, we're not going to let any tyrant oppress or decimate the galaxy this time. I nodded with a tired smile, relieved that we had some breath. However, our battle was far from over. Waving to the officers present, I gathered all the human captains in a crisis video conference. Calvary has come to our aid, but I know that many still have doubts about their motives, I began solemnly. However, we have no choice but to rely on this unlikely alliance to survive. There was a shower of nods of agreement the faces of my colleagues reflecting the same unwavering determination. Good soldiers followed orders without hesitation, but great leaders needed to have faith in the darkest of times. Keep your cannons pointed and your shields up, I ordained with renewed vigor. Today, we will write our own destiny of glory. Onward for mankind, onward for the survival of all the free races of the galaxy. A unison roar of onward, echoed through the channels of communication, rekindling the fire of hope in every human heart present. Grabbing the controls with renewed force, I threw the mighty Baltimore back into the fray, our new cavern allies blasting their way through with a volley of plasma torpedoes. My eyes scanned the bridge's control panels, assessing the damage suffered by the Baltimore. Casualty report, I ordered hoarsely. Each loss was like a sharp blade thrust into my heart. We estimate about 40% casualties in the entire fleet, Captain, Lieutenant Yin replied in a somber tone. But we were able to destroy or neutralize all the remaining enemy forces. I nodded silently, feeling a mixture of relief and sadness. We had won, but at what cost? Billions of precious lives had been taken in that bloody confrontation, all because of the greed of a few. My thoughts were interrupted by a new transmission coming in. On the large main display, Ambassador Krinroth's stern face took shape. He waved in solemn greeting. Captain Ornut, I must extend my deepest congratulations to your race, he began in his characteristic grave tone. The bravery and resilience of humans in this battle not only saved their colonies, they also freed the entire galaxy from tyranny. I frowned, still suspicious after so many betrayals and twists and turns. How can I be sure of the true intentions of your people, I replied, perhaps more harshly than necessary. What's to stop them from one day turning against us again? The Krinath shook his large head in a gesture of understanding. I recognize that many mistakes were made, Captain. The seed of fear and distrust was planted long before the first contact with your civilization. 
However, I believe that humanity's example can be the light that shines on a new era of renewal for the entire galaxy. I blinked, confused by his cryptic words. The Krinoth seemed to catch my bewilderment and continued. The path of oppression and conquest that some races followed was the product of isolation and ignorance. But you humans, even after suffering unimaginable genocide, have never lost your inner flame that spark of diversity, compassion and willpower that inspired us to take a stand. He paused, his old eyes twinkling with millennia-old wisdom. Their journey has shown us that the true greatness of a people lies not in their technology or military might, but in their ability to retain their humanity even in the darkest hours. It is this lesson that we intend to take to the rest of the galaxy by reforming the Federation with new ideals of mutual understanding and freedom for all races. I remained silent, digesting the ambassador's profound words. He was right if our bloody epic could inspire a galaxy renaissance, perhaps the sacrifices would have been worth it. Perhaps together we could build a future of peace and hope on the ashes of conflict. You have my word, ambassador. I finally replied with a tired smile. The Terran Coalition will stand by you on this noble path. Our people know well the horrors of war and oppression, and we will do everything to build a galaxy where no civilization has to suffer the same. The Krinoth returned my smile with a respectful bow. So be it, Captain Victor Ornott. May the flame of human determination remain lit like a beacon for the entire galaxy. Watching the broadcast end, I felt a new sense of purpose welling up in my chest. Painful as it had been, our journey of blood and tears had given humanity a new mission, to guide this universe into an era of understanding and compassion. The decades dragged on like light years in the vast mantle of the galaxy. Much has changed since that epic battle that decided the course of countless civilizations. I, Victor Ornott, watched from the balcony the profound transformations that swept all quarters, bringing a new dawn of peace, cooperation, and mutual respect. The old federation of interplanetary races was completely reshaped after the events of that bloody fight. The tyrannical forces of the Thriven, Kintari, and Kalaxi were dispersed and their leadership deposed. In its place, a new galactic order, the Unified Star Alliance, was erected, founded on the principles of self-determination and valuing diversity among species. I remember as if it were today the founding ceremony of the Covenant, which took place right here on Earth. Representatives of all the free races of the galaxy were present, from the ancient and wise Krinoth to the humanoid aspirants of Alhak III. And there I was, the old captain of the Baltimore, conducting the swearing-in rituals with Ambassador Cavern. On this solemn day, we swear to respect and protect the sovereignty and traditions of all peoples, my voice echoed through the great hall filled with alien dignitaries. May the flame of human determination, which has guided us through the darkest night, illuminate our path towards a future of lasting cooperation and friendship. A deafening roar of approval swept through the room, thousands of different races united by the same ideal. Looking at the hopeful faces around me, I could hardly hold back the tears of pride. We had emerged victorious from the conflict, Yes, but more than that, we had inspired a whole movement of renewal in the galaxy. Our journey of suffering had finally gained a greater purpose. The next few years were one of intense work and diplomacy, but in the new light of the Star Alliance, anything seemed possible. Our human colonies flourished, thriving as never before. We have established treaties for the exchange of scientific and cultural knowledge with dozens of alien worlds. Even the former Thriven enemies, after a long quarantine, adhered to the principles of the Alliance and rose again as a more enlightened society. Throughout this process, the words and history of humanity have served as an anchor, a guide for all races. Our cryptic references to the great works of Terran literature have become even more widespread and studied. Alien scholars have come to teach the philosophies and principles that have shaped our civilization since the dawn of time. Existence precedes essence, I used to say to my students at the Alliance Academies. It's the maxim that sums up humanity's journey through the cosmos. Our ability to reinvent ourselves, to shape our own destiny in the face of adversity, is what has allowed us to not only survive, but thrive. Today, retired and in my final years, 
I like to revisit those lessons in my mind. Looking out the window of my ebony house, I can see huge spaceports and courtyards of frenetic construction. Hundreds of new ships are being built by a workforce made up of all kinds scientific exploration machines, family passenger transports, even imposing battle cruisers. But not for war this time. All of those ships have a single noble purpose, to expand our alliance to new frontiers, carrying the message of hope and cosmic brotherhood to all ends of the galaxy. And it is with this in mind that I find my greatest fulfillment. There may have been blood and tears on our journey, but in the end, the true human spirit prevailed like a sun that never goes out. The spark of determination within each of us ultimately not only saved us from extinction, but lit the way to a new galactic dawn. That is the eternal legacy we leave.